Good morning. Um, as was mentioned earlier, I'm Jill Carter, Executive Director of the Health and Wellness Department uh, for the Boston Public Schools. If you've never heard about that department before, it's because it's brand new this year. So I'm excited to be able to give you um, some insight on what we've been doing in the district around health and wellness. Um, as has been mentioned already many times this morning, the idea that um, children who are healthy are better able to learn. Uh, that's, everyone in this room believes that. And we at the district level have been trying to align our efforts around health and wellness with the academic achievement um, work that's going on with the superintendent's acceleration agenda and with some other sort of jargon that you may have heard of, uh, the academic achievement framework. So really trying to um, look at what are the issues with students and then what are their what are their health issues and then what are their academic needs. Um, just I just want to start with just a, a brief story for, for me about a story that I heard um, that really brought together this piece that we're talking a lot about, how is health and academics linked and why is it so important that we have this work coming together. Uh, one day I was, uh, about two years ago maybe, I was driving to work um, listening to um, NPR and they were interviewing Boston Public School students about why they were dropping out or what were the things that led them to consider dropping out. And there was a young boy, a ninth grader um, from one of our schools um, being interviewed and I wasn't expecting to hear this and I have to say it really touched me and sort of you know, made me want to work even harder at what we were doing. Um, he uh, was talking about the fact that when he was in third grade um, at elementary school he was overweight and how he started to get bullied um, as early as third grade and how that made him really not want to go to school. Um, by fifth grade he started sort of pushing back and fighting back because the bullying was only getting worse, not getting better. And then by middle school he started getting suspended for fighting because now it wasn't just pushing, you know, just language, but he was actually getting physical about it. And then when he got suspended, he was then, of course, missing out on some school classes, and he started getting behind academically. And needless to say, it was spiraling. And now he was a ninth grader, and he was very far behind, and he was not wanting to repeat ninth grade, and he was thinking maybe he should drop out. Now, that's just one story, and that's just one health health issue, physical issue, that connected with the mental, emotional, social, emotional piece. But I think probably all of you have had experiences in schools where you could, you can probably come up with some other stories where you know that this is the case. Um, because we have a lot of health issues um, and we have academic achievement gaps, we, we know there are health disparities, we know these are achievement gaps, there's an overlap there and we must address those two things together. Uh, so as a district, what we've been trying to do um, is really come together, cross those silos, hopefully hold hands across departments uh, within the district. And last year, the way we approached this is we did a strategic, we went through a strategic planning process on health and wellness. Uh, the superintendent and the deputy superintendent thought it was really important that if we were going to make this a primary um, area of work, we needed to get, get a group together. We had 15 different um, folks come together as well as doing some external interviews with our partners to find out where we currently were with health and wellness, to find out how we could better improve our organizational structure and align all the district initiatives that were going on in, in various silos, as Linda already mentioned. Um, but also we wanted to come up with what are our primary outcome goals for students that we should be working on. There's so many things we could be working on. Um, we've, we accomplished this task in a pretty short amount of time, starting last April through the end of September. We will be releasing an executive summary of our, of our um, strategic plan uh, shortly, and then in the fall we'll actually do more of a meeting where I can share more of the details of the strategic plan. But but what I wanted to just highlight today is that we were trying to create, and I think have, a roadmap for Boston Public Schools as to what are the areas we need to improve on. How do we need to move forward in health and wellness? And we hope by having that roadmap that we're more ready to engage in a really effective way with all of our community partners. Uh, at this point, the mission statement that we came out with for the district was the Boston Public Schools will actively promote health and wellness of students 
to advance both their healthy development and readiness to learn. So again, linking the health with the academic achievement. Um, really, what we want to do is to create a, a healthy environment where kids, where the healthy choice is the easy choice. And so we could talk about physical education, we could talk about health education, and I'm going to tell you about some of the things we're doing in those areas. But if we, if we just teach children what it is they're supposed to do, what healthy choices they should make, but then they don't have an environment where they can choose those things, um, then we're really not supporting their learning in the way that we should. So we're trying to think, again, about the teaching of healthy um, choices, but the environment. And just to give you an example, so, um, you know, if many years ago, probably 12 years ago, I started working with, this, with schools, with actually with teachers and training them on curriculum. And, you know, the teachers would point out to me, and, and the curriculum was around nutrition and physical activity, and the teachers would point out to me, well, okay, so I'm going to teach the kids about eating more fresh fruits and vegetables, but then we sell candy bars, you know, as a way to raise funds. Um, that doesn't make sense to me. Or the children bring in the blue stuff and the chips. Um, and that's, you know, also there seems to be the learning and the learning environment are not really supporting each other there. So what we're trying to do as a district, and, and that's just the food issue, I guess I could use the same thing around physical activity for teaching children that they should be physically active, but then we're having them sit still for three and four hours without any movement breaks or without the opportunity to engage in some kind of physical activity on a regular basis, whether that's physical education or some other opportunities. Again, we're saying one thing, but we're doing another thing. So as a district, we want to create those the healthy environment where it's easy for children. They have a school lunch. They have um, other kinds of snacks. They have physical activities. Um, they have supports around stress and bullying so that there's an environment that supports what, they're, what we're trying to get them um, to actually practice outside of school. Um, so part of the way we can, we can do this, we think, in creating this environment is we really need to work at the system level, at the district level, to coordinate our efforts. So we're trying to implement a coordinated school health model, which I, I know that um, Mary and Pat have presented on at their last meeting where they had some really great keynote speakers come and talk to us about what coordinated school health is. But in our district, what I think that means to us is really it's, it's health and wellness working with health services, working with the principals at the school level, working with food services, with facilities, with um, psychological services. Uh, you know, there's eight components with family and student engagement and of course with our community partners. I actually think the coordinated school health model in its current state, it, it doesn't have that link to community as I think it, you know, it really needs to. So we maybe need to have our new, we need to have a new coordinated school health uh, picture to show and, and, and create that community piece a little stronger in there. But, um, but anyway, so that's part of what my, the health and wellness department is trying to do, is to be the linker, if you will. You know, it's, it's hard to, be, to do interdisciplinary work um, if somebody's not, you know, the one that's supposed to be bringing everybody together and convening on a regular basis. So we, you know, the health and wellness department is one of the things we're trying to do is link across silos and bring folks together. Um, we were fortunate to get funding, which is why we could create a health and wellness department from the Centers for Disease Control. We pulled together about four grants. We now have 15. Last year, at this time, there was one person. It, I was the wellness coordinator, and I was doing work on wellness policy. We now have a department of 15. Um, we were able to hire from September to January. And the work that we're doing is on physical education, physical activity, um, health education, and a lot of work on wellness-related policies. So just to um, highlight, and I'm just checking my time here, um, just, to, just to highlight a few of the, the initiatives that we're involved in, I, I want to make sure everybody knows about wellness councils. Um, you know, we, had, we, we instituted a wellness policy in 2006 in the district, and part of that policy and then a, a partnership that we developed with the Alliance for Health Regeneration um, allowed us to focus on making sure that every school has a wellness council and that the wellness councils assess where they're at every year um, and then they create a wellness action plan. And the wellness action plan 
is part of the whole school improvement plan. And most of you, if you're working with schools, probably know the whole school improvement plan, or the WISA, if you get into our abbreviations, um, is the roadmap for for whole school improvement, just like the title says. So the schools are trying to think about how do they, what do they have to do across math, science, language arts, wellness, and family and student engagement. So the Wellness Council is a place that you could go and I hope participate as a community partner and offer your voice and some resources, hopefully, to implement some of the outcomes of, that, that might get put on the action plan. So that's something that everybody's supposed to be working on, and that's some technical assistance from my department is there, as well as from our partners of the Alliance for Healthier Generation, to help schools do the, to do their wellness action plans. Well, this year, we had 112 out of 135 schools have a completed wellness action plan. I think we've moved that up. So that was in like January. We're closer to the 135 now. But that's really phenomenal because if you know, as you know, there's there's such a variety of things going on in our schools, and the fact that they're all buying in and creating that plan means there's a place for all of the community partners as well as the district to support them in the work they're doing. And I would just say one example of how we're trying to cross silos, if you will, we've created a wellness action planning team where district level departments come together, look at those action plans, and try to figure out what schools want, what they need help with. Across, so we're bringing the departments together to look at that. So that's just one example. Um, just uh, two other initiative pieces I want to mention. We're really focused a lot of our work on improving the physical education right now and the physical activity. What we're trying to do is to, in, to really create a comprehensive physical activity program across schools with physical education being a cornerstone of that physical activity program. So right now we have three, well, four instructional coaches for physical education that go in and actually work with physical education teachers to try to implement K to eight, a SPARK curriculum, the SPARK K to eight curriculum. We're working at the high school level too, but I'm just gonna say a few things um, about this, the SPARK. What we really wanna do is increase moderate to vigorous physical activity in children and focus on lifelong physical activity skills. So get away from just the old sports-based and more into the fitness world. Uh, we, had, we've, we were trying to do 40 schools in two years. 42 schools signed up this year to be part of this program. So we, it, we, we, we had to hire a new person um, to be able to accommodate this. It's been phenomenal. We're also measuring fitness in grades four through nine across the district. And we plan to, right now we're rolling it out as four, seven, and nine. Um, so this is where we send teams out to support PE teachers to actually collect fitness assessment data. So these are some of the things we're doing. One last piece, we, we are working on our health education frameworks as well. For the first time in many years, we have a health education program director, and we have lots of community input on our, our PATS on our advisory um, board on that. Um, one key piece that I hope you'll go back and ask your schools that you're working with, do you have a wellness champion in those schools? We are stipending 100 wellness champions this year in 50 schools. Next year it will be 200 in 100 schools. The wellness champion I see as a link between, um, it, it, it's someone that can be on the wellness council, that can interact with our department and get training, but can also be somebody there in the schools that, that champion. So if you're working individually with schools, find out if they have a wellness champion or talk to us and we can tell you. I think my time is, is, is up, so I should pass the mic. But thank you for...